Welcome to all the beloveds of God. Once again, we gather for devotions, um, looking at the scriptures. Today we're in the Hebrew Bible, but looking at and being reminded that there is always a fresh word for us in our time and in our place and in our circumstances. And today, this prophet Amos is where we will be. And Amos is unique. Not, there is not this moment of anointing. Amos is a very simple figure. And yet, the, this short book in the Hebrew Bible is unique in that it is a compilation of some of the visions that um, Amos was given to share with the people. And so today, as we look at them, it's, uh, what does it say to us today? I am Heather E. Clausen, uh, pastor of Herman United Methodist Church in Herman, Minnesota. This passage I'm about to share is an interesting connection to my own home life. Being married to a carpenter, a carpenter who collects plumb bobs. And if you've ever been in the parsonage, you have seen some of them uh, hanging for display. Let's hear these words from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac will be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Judah, earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman, a dresser of sycamore trees, and the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, obviously, the words were not well received. Because it was a prediction. And that the way things were, were not the way things were going to continue. There was a prediction that Jeroboam, who apparently was not ruling in a way that was God intended, was given this oracle, this vision, that that way of being, that way of ruling, would not last much longer. So, plumb bob, plumb line, the way to set the corner of a building straight, the way to set walls so they are straight, a line with a weight that helps do that. And we might not hear this passage the way they had heard it then. We might hear in that phrase, um, I will never again pass them by, that that's a reassurance that God is with them. It is and it isn't. Because it also is saying, no longer am I going to ignore 
when people are doing things that are harmful to others. When people in power are ruling in such a way that are harmful to others. When someone who says they speak for me, yes, speak for me, and of course that would be Amaziah, speak for me in ways that are harmful to others, I will no longer ignore it. So there is a moment here, a moment that in this vision given, and visions were probably the least trusted of what a prophet could say, because, you know, you could dismiss, dismiss it pretty easily. Even think of um, when Peter had to admonish the crowd that those who had experienced the all that of Pentecost were not with drink, were not deluded, were not mixed up. Well, often that was a way to dismiss a prophet that brought a vision was, oh, just his imagination, just his agenda. Maybe he was drunk at the time. You know, there were a lot of ways to dismiss it. We can't seem to verify historically the end of this reign, but that's not really the point in this story that we're given in Amos today. The point is that as long as things continue in ways that are harmful, judgmental, bringing division of people, God has that plumb line. And there will be a time when that type of leader, that type of ruler, uh, will no longer be in power, will no longer be able to do the harm that is being done. So, what do we get from this? Well, we need to look to what the people really heard. Um, they heard two things that were helpful. And it is these two authorities or these two learnings or these two hearings that can speak to new contexts, new communities, what is going on in our present world today. Uh, first, it was a reminder. It was a reminder and brought comfort because God is still there. God is still actively intervening in history. One of the things that Jeroboam had done was divided the kingdom to two separate places and two separate places of worship. That was one of the challenges. One in Bethel and the one in Dan. And people would not need any longer to travel to Jerusalem. We're providing a worship place for the nor Northerners. Yeah. Obviously, the people heard that that was not what God intended. The second, this oracle, this vision, um, was a way in which, you know, the future generations as they unfolded would still see themselves as the chosen people of God. If God intervenes for previous generations to bring about the change for all people, then God will continue to intervene. And we who have been reached through Jesus know that that did continue. That Jesus taught what it really was that God intended for the world today. And we don't, what we tend to do when we look at the prophets, and, and I've over the years had people I've worked with and parishioners I've worked with that said, oh, we don't need to look at the Old Testament. Everything's new and the New Testament's the only thing that counts. No, <laughs> not really. And if the history of God, our relationship as humanity and all of creation with God begins in Genesis. This story is unfolding and unfolding and still unfolding in our lives. 
And we tend to look at these texts and either dismiss them or soften them. And Amos is, is not really a soft text. There is a plumb line. There is a standard that God has that is still unfolding in our lives today, a standard about how we are to be with one another, how we are to care for creation, how we are to care and be in relationship with people very different from us. And that standard, of course, we heard, love one another as I have loved you. And that really is the plumb line. And it's not something that we should dismiss. Even, you know, as Paul said, you know, we, we know that we'll be forgiven. Does that mean we should go and sin more and more? No, it means the opposite. It means if a God can love us and knowing exactly who we are, what's happened in our lives, what we have done and what we've not done and on and on, if that God can love and forgive us, how are we to respond? Giving freely exactly what God has given to each of us. And so this passage from Amos is a reminder. Yes, we have a loving God. Yes, we have a patient God. But things are going to be allowed sometimes to unfold. Not be intervened or corrected, but cared for in ways that bring people back to this plumb line, this law of love. And you can take this text kind of as self-reflection. So what are some of the alliances that are, we have made or are made in our century today, in our world today, that have not lived out that plumb line, that law of love? This oppression that Amos is speaking to was to those who have power, those who have wealth, that take advantage of poor people. And guess what? It still is a problem in our world today. And you don't have to look very far to figure that out. So hear it clearly, not as a threat, but as an example of the way we are to be. Our plumb line is the law of love to all humanity, to all of creation. That is our plumb line. Go in peace. Amen.